paying taxes. Okay, <laughs> waiting for Jeff to get dressed here. Kind of awkward, but that's okay. <laughs> Today is Tuesday, May 11th, 2021. This is the Committee of the Whole Meeting. We have one item here tonight to go through. We'll go through it in a second here. As anyone that's been watching the board over the past two meetings, um, which takes us to two meetings in April, we've been discussing a long-term quasi-maintenance program that will take care of this village for basic perpetuity. And they basically resolve, revolve around the roads and then drainage, sidewalk issues throughout this whole village. And Kobe, your staff and others have done a phenomenal job. I know we were hoping to do this last year, but due to COVID, we punted for a year to get everything up and going. But um, we've had two great presentations uh, to the village board. We asked all the questions that I asked again um, tonight. We were talking a little bit beforehand. If everyone was fine, everyone seemed to be comfortable with all the information we see to this point as far as what we're looking to do. And with that, why don't we go in and I'll kind of go through the whole thing. Up there is the presentation. As I said, April 13th and 27th, April 13th, we did the uh, roadway management program. And it truly is that. It's a management program to make sure roads stay up and viable for the next 50 years and beyond. Part of our 2025 plan was setting this village up for future generations. We got the new public works facility. We did the west side one, new one on Devon. We did two new fire stations on Fargo and on Meacham. And of course, we had done the village hall one not long ago. But the study here looks at how we can do this, the cost behind it. And at the end of the day, it was identified we need to get, we need to bring in approximately $5 million, just under $5 million a year of new revenue to keep this going. Now, the uniqueness about our grow compared to most governments, you, know, you look at the federal government, they want to spend, but they don't tell you how they pay for it. They just print more money. Uh, you look at the state a lot of times, they spend, they just don't care where the money's coming from. Here in Oak Grove, why we're successful, and we take pride in this, is whenever we do something, we find a way to pay for it and keep it being paid for in the future. Example, part of the biggest part of the 2025 plan was the two new fire stations, the new public works facility on Devon, renovation of the one on Beast of Field to meet you. Those we paid for with an ongoing electric tax we already had in place, but it has generated so much more revenue than we expected that we're able to use that source of funding to pay the bonds for that work. So we always earmark a source of funding to pay for things we have going on. And that's why I think Oak Grove has been so successful in its government that we manage our capital, we manage our expenditures, and we find ways to take care of it at all times. Maggie? The first thing I'm going to be looking at is this. It's been 14 years since we've increased the general property tax fund. If you think about that, that goes before the Great Recession, so 2007. We've increased property taxes since then, mainly to cover pension costs, which are state mandated, overseen by the state. Um, I'm proposing this year, there'll be, if we adopt this, we'll approve it in December of this year. It won't be billed to the homeowners to August of 22. So it was a little lag time there. But one of the great things we take pride in is that we've got the lowest combined property tax rate in all Northwest Cook County. So if you look at the first one, with a $2 million increase, it adds approximately $68 a year on the average $300,000 home here in Elk Grove Village. If you notice the first line, Tax bill is about 7,300 on that $300,000 home. It'll go from 7,303 up to 7,361, $68 more. But the good news is we're still, by over $200 a year, the lowest property tax in all Northwest suburban area. So the first green outgrowth is currently what we pay, 7,303. The second one is after the property tax goes in, 7,371. And based on Mount Prospect's current rate, this is our new rate. This is my price of current. So if they increase it all, there's a go up. There'll still be $210 higher than Oak Grove. Uh, Arlington Heights will be $505 higher. Schaumburg will be almost $700 higher. So we're still going to have the lowest property tax rate in Northwest Cook County 
which we take great pride in. But it will generate for the village $2 million, which we'll put toward these projects. Maggie? The other one. One of the big components we're doing, we're looking to spend about $1.5 million on rear yard drainage and sidewalk improvements, which affect drainage all um, a year. So one area we're looking to do is increase a water user fee. We don't have one right now. Most towns have them. We're looking to finally implement one. It'd be $5 a month for the average home. And if you look what's around us, all seven of comparable communities have one. And they range from, from $3 a month to $10 a month, the average being about $6 a month. Additionally, five out of seven also do a stormwater fee to the water bills, anywhere from 76 cents a month up to 625. The two communities that do not have stormwater fee, uh, the user fees are 10 and $8, which would be $5 and $3 more than we're suggesting. So we're asking for a $5 a month fee and $60 a year annually, and that'll raise approximately $1 million a year. Maggie? Here you look, compared to other towns with the charge and all that, you'll see where we'll fall in place. Remember, right now, we do not have any fee. So we'd be one with no line up there. And by even implementing one, we're still lower than Arlington Heights by well over half, Mount Press by exactly half, Palatine by half, Schaumburg with $3 a month cheaper, Rolling Meadows almost $3 a month cheaper, Hoffman States will be $2 a month cheaper. The only one that's just slightly cheaper than us by 50 cents is Displains. So even by implementing one, we're still the lowest out there, except for Displains by 50 cents. Remember, we don't have one now. All these other towns have been collected, and it makes sense when we talk about drainage issues and water issues. That's water and sewer work. And that's what would generate about a million dollars a year. Maggie? The last thing is natural gas. Right now, <coughs> we charge um, three cents um, a therm, or two cents a therm. We're looking to go up to the five cents, which you see most of the towns already charge. So we'd be going to the same ones that Rolling Meadows, Hoffman States, Arlington Heights charge. And um, so that'd be looked to go. That would generate about a million and a half dollars a year and cost the average homeowner about $30 a year or $2.50 a month on average. Maggie? Now, we already have an electric tax going. We're not looking at adjusting that at all. So what we're looking to do is this. As I mentioned earlier, we've been paying our bonds for the police stations, fire stations, and other work we did in our 2025 plan out of that electric tax or approximately 4.2 million a year pays off the bonds. We've been putting in an additional about 600,000 to the police pension, 600,000 to the fire pension each year, which is one of the reasons we passed this tax to help work on those pension funds. We're gonna increase that to 800,000. So we're increasing by 33% the amount we're putting in police pensions and 33% the fire pensions electric. By doing that, we still will have about $250,000 a year available. We're going to put that into these programs also. And we know the electric revenue is going to continue to grow. These data centers, we talk about data centers all the time, they are a gold mine for electric tax revenue and water fees. So we know that's going to continue to grow as it's been growing recently. So as that grows, if we need a further source of funding, depending on what's going on the roads, the rear yard drainage sidewalks, that would be available for us to use in future need years if needed without raising any fees. It's locked in. If we don't need it, we can utilize other places, whether you use it for pensions or whatever, that's available to us. Because we know that's only going to grow and should grow significantly the more of these data centers we got online coming. Maggie? So, if you look at what we're looking to do, the property tax increase generates $2 million for the village, gas tax, $1.5 million to the village, stormwater fee, a million, electric tax at this time about $250,000, or there's our magical number, $4,750,000. An average homeowner would see an increase of about $158 a year. Remember, our property tax will still be the lowest out there, 
Our water fee, well, except for displays by 50 cents, will be the lowest out there. Our gas tax, we're tied for the highest in the area, but comparable to many of the towns around us. And again, electric tax, it's already coming in. We do not take this lightly. I've been very proud for 14 years to hold the line on property taxes. But like anything, it can't go on forever. And more importantly, we look at what we're going to use the money for. Roadway improvement. We need the roads. We need to stay strong. Our village is over 60 years old now. we got to make sure those roads keep going for the next 60 years. It's not for us sitting up here. It's for our kids and more importantly, our grandkids out there. They have it. Just like our 2025 plan has always been earmarked for the future generations to be served. We've always said we had great stewards of this village before we got on this board. The Zedek administration and others have always set this village up well. We owe it to the people coming in the future to set this village up well for their future too. And this is one way to do it. And this is critical for us to get this done. Um, just remember this, I know people are saying, well, we're coming out of pandemic. The property tax won't be seen for about a year and four months, 16 months. The water fee won't be all implemented until sometime in the fall, early winter. And the uh, gas tax won't go into play probably for another five, six months also. So these won't be hitting the taxpayers for quite some time. And the way things are coming out, the economy's coming back, that's better timing to do something like that. And that's why we're looking at those time frames to implement this. So that's important. Meg, is that the last one, Maggie? It's the th yeah. three cents or five cents? It's it's two cents now, it'll go to five cents. Okay. It's a three, three cent, cent increase. Oh, a three cent increase, right. okay. So um, that'd be going there. <clears throat> so again, do we enjoy doing this? There's no board out there, <clears throat> all of our towns around us, have done what we've done on property taxes. And we take pride in what we've done. But there comes a point where we gotta step up and remember, as we talked about, not many towns have addressed road issues like we're doing. A few of our neighbors have. We wanna make sure we address it right. We've seen towns around here that didn't address the roads and they're paying the price. And I'm on TV, so I won't mention some towns that don't it. But we all know where they are if you drive around. Uh, we're not gonna let that happen to Oak Grove. Like we didn't let it happen with the fire station, our police station, we're still lining all of our water mains, we're lining sewer lines, we're making sure these things work for the future. This is another component. But the key of this is, is these projects go on for perpetuity. Roads go forever. You can't just say, okay, we fixed them once, they're good forever. No, we're staying on this maintenance program, do it right. Same thing with our drainage. Remember, no town really does what we do. We go on private property, spend taxpayers' money, at no cost to the homeowners, to fix drainage issues that a lot of them were caused by the people that live there or the neighbors before that. But we know it's important. It's been very successful for 24 years. We're just gonna step it up and do even more than we've been doing. And sidewalks is something that, you know, it's concrete, you know, it eventually has to be taken care of. And we're now gonna aggressively take care of those over the years too. But again, these are projects gonna go on forever. Rear drainage, as we saw that during that meeting, it was mostly east side being take up. Now, as Kobe said, we're getting a lot more calls on the west side than we ever got before. As that side ages, the issues are coming to them now. So these are gonna go on for perpetuity also. But we gotta find a way to pay for it. We can't be like other governments that say, oh yeah, we'll fix it, why are you gonna pay for it? We'll worry about that later. All they do is they punt it to future generations and then they pay through the nose because they gotta catch up. We don't do that. So we bite the bullet once, we do it right, we move on. That 2025 plan has been so successful here in Oak Grove from roadway improvements, all the other work, this kind of dovetails into that, except it won't stop in 25. It might be 3,025, who knows? But then we'll be flying airplanes around, I guess, I don't know. So this is what I'm proposing. It was gonna be 316, but because of Trustee Frankie, I cut it in half to 158 just for Trustee Frankie. I held my breath until you I don't know what I wanted. <laughs> so, with that said, any questions from anybody um, as we get working on this? Do any of these increases affect businesses? Yes. Uh, the roadway, the property taxes, um, the, the water gas. fee, the, the gas. gas, yeah. Everyone's paying a fair share because there's sidewalks in the industrial park, there's roadways in the industrial park. 
And we've been doing a lot of drainage improvements already in Jim Foster Park, part of the 2025 plan. So they've been getting a lot of the benefits already. You go by the culverts and all the rest. So everyone pays their fair share on this one. Okay. Other questions? I just have one comment that with all these uh, improvements, people should realize too that this is also going to help their value of their homes. Yes. So that will. Good They're, they're, they're going to get a return for this. First thing, what they call it, curb appeal. Mm -hmm. You're driving down a street, you want to see a nice street when you're right. driving up to that house. You know, and we saw from the pictures Kobe's guys had, some of these streets really need some work. Mm -hmm. We're going to make sure we stay on top of them and get it done and all that. And I want to say, if I can real quick, uh, where's Matt? Matt Roan and Kobe, uh, they've done a lot of work. Like I say, this has been a two-year process almost. We've been working on this. And it's a big project. Like I say, think about it. That's a lot of money every year, $5 million a year, every year after year after year. It could potentially grow, uh, depending on the electric tax and also more work. Um, this is a major annual undertaking we're taking on. That's, that's a lot. And, mm -hmm. um, but I want to compliment both Kobe and Matt for a lot of work getting this done. And Matt got tired of me pulling the papers on my briefcase all the time. I know, Matt, I look at this money. Can we, how about if we do this? How would you, no, Mayor, we got to watch this guy. So, I mean, we've gone through on these numbers a lot of times. Matter of fact, we just finished up the final proposal uh, last Thursday. So um, that's how we've been trying to work this fair for everyone. Mm -hmm. And so everyone benefits, everyone pays from the cost. Any other questions? Does anybody have a problem with this? You know, if there's an issue or anything like that, now's the time to bring it up before staff starts. It's a time off till we start putting this through, but before they start implementing things. May I? Yes, Trustee Frankie. <laughs> I just would like to say at the beginning of this, I was pretty dead against it. Um, I was hoping we'd get more revenue from some other items and uh, different things, operations going on in town. But after the presentations that I saw, I realized how much uh, we really need to get done. And uh, my thing is really, you know, sidewalks, the streets, but uh, how much uh, we really need to start taking care of it. I think everybody will know that they have you know areas around their house and parkways that are flooding and become a hazard in the winter and this helps takes care of that so um, I wish we didn't have to do this but uh, for the long run and I think uh, again kudos to being able to you know break up the different fee if you don't use a lot of gas you're not going to pay a lot of tax you know your water um, obviously the real estate it's going to come out and you have to pay it but uh, I would say uh, staff did a great job in putting it all together and uh, helping us realize what we need to do for the future and that's what we've been trying to do for a long time here just get everything ready for the future so um, I will be uh, voting yes on this well and Jeff brings up a good point on a lot of things one everyone during the pandemic I've never seen so many people walk around this village in my life I mean everyone walked and which is great. I mean, it's healthy, it's good. But also never heard so many people saying, you know, we got a lot of water on this sidewalk over there. Gee, Craig, you know what? There's a, this one sidewalk, it's not quite, you know, it doesn't seem quite smooth. No. It's amazing how people are walking because we heard, and again, now I want to remind people, everything does not get done in one year. No. You know, so, you know, there might be an issue that's got to be addressed. It may take a year or two to get to. So you've got to be somewhat patient. We can't do this whole village at one time. It'd be great if we could cost about a hundred million dollars, but we can't. Um, it's physically impossible too. So it's gonna take some time. We went through we went through these things, how we prioritize them and do it. So be patient on it. The other thing is I know a lot of people are gonna say, you know, we talked, you know, on the side, Jeff and I talked a few times aside, you know, like, well mayor, if you didn't have concerts and if we didn't have Oktoberfest, we didn't have a fourth of July fireworks, all that or the Memorial Day thing and we didn't have play party picnic, basically had nothing going on in the village no community events, no bringing the community together, that budget is only about $740,000 a year. So we can cut out all the stuff that brings a community together in a positive way that gives the true hometown feel we have in Oak Grove, and it's not even going to be one-eighth of what we need. We still got to come up with seven-eighths of that money. So I think if we took out one-eighth of the money, so for $19 a year is what the savings would be. I think people are more than have to pay $19 a year to have the concerts, the Oktoberfest, the uh, tree lighting, the play party picnic, the Memorial Day, includes also 
Pat's recycling parade. events. No parade. Parade. That's included in there. No parade. <laughs> but even Pat's recycling events are including that 740000 So we don't want to gut this village of its identity. And that's what's unique about Elk Grove. We're truly a community. And at the board meeting tonight, we're going to be talking about how we're going to bring this community back together during these uh, events coming up. So that's why people, you know, I know they think, well, that couldn't, that didn't come close to paying it. So that's why we want to be able to still do what we can. Keep the lowest taxes and still have the best community around. And community event support. So we looked at all that. Just so people, that's why I know the figures so well. We looked, okay, maybe we get rid of the community events. I'll be honest with you, I thought we spent more money than we did. I really did. I thought it was in excess of that, way over 740. I was impressed that we got so much done for what we do spend for the community. So we looked at everything, you know. We tried to get George to give up a salary for one year, which would pay 20 years of this, but he cried enough, we left it alone. I'm joking on that, folks. But um, the bottom line is, that's why it took so long. Matt and Ray and Christine Trump back there, we looked at all sources of funding. We looked everywhere. And we thought this is the best way to do it. The fairest way is, you know, Sam said and Jeff said, it's the fairest way to do it, to get this done. And again, I can't remember the last time I had to sit there and do this in front of the village. You know, as mayor, it's been an awful long time. So, you know, so, you know, we're going forward on this. But again, we think we did a good job and fair job. And uh, I'm sure we'll hear about it. I'm sure we'll read about it on Facebook, you know, all over the place. But true. I also think that people realize there's a reason why Oak Grove is number one. And we're going to make sure we keep it number one. So with nothing else, okay, we'll conclude the committee hall. We'll be back at 7 o'clock for the board meeting. Thank you. Okay. Okay.